Over the past 12 weeks, the class team has been responsible for developing today's graduates to serve as professional naval officers, worthy of special trust and confidence. The Class 04 TAC 2 4 class teams includes class officers Lieutenant Geraldi and Lieutenant Mattis. Class Recruit Division Commander, Senior Chief Petty Officer Clemente, and Class Drill Instructor, Gunnery Sergeant Thompson. Guests are encouraged to take photographs from the seating area at any time during the ceremony, except during the playing of the national anthem. The order of events for today's ceremony is as follows. At 1000, Captain Alcorn, Commanding Officer at Oak Officer Training Command Newport, and Rear Admiral Kenny Epps, Commander, Naval Supply Systems Command, the guest of honor for today's ceremony will arrive. Guests will be asked to rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem and invocation. The commanding officer and guest of honor will address the graduating class and minister of the oath of office. The graduates will then be recognized to repeat a presentation of their commission by the commanding officer and the guest of honor. The guests will be asked to rise for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal. All right, zero four, attack two four, attention, and salute, ladies and gentlemen. Please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem and invocation. <laughs> Officer Training Command Newport, arrival. Supply Systems Command, arriving. Eternal Father, strong to save, as we enter the season of celebrating sweet baby Jesus, we know that all nights are not silent, and currently there is not peace on earth. Therefore, we celebrate with these men and women who have answered the call to lead their sailors to do the nation's bidding. We thank you for their commitment to the American way of life. We are especially grateful for the friends and family represented here today. Each of them will sacrifice much for our collective freedom. We ask that you give them peace and understanding. 
May all that have and done here today bring you glory and honor to the accomplishments of these graduating. We ask your blessing upon this staff, upon the school, our base, this nation, and our world. In all your holy names we pray, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Everett Alcorn, Officer Training Command Newport. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Epps, distinguished guests, veterans, service members, Officer Training Command staff, family members and friends, and most importantly, the soon to be commissioned officers of OCS Class 04, TAC 24. Good morning. Good morning, sir! I'm excited to welcome 79 of our newest graduates into one of the most challenging and fulfilling careers, that of Naval Officer. To the family and friends joining us, I applaud you for the great work you did preparing these individuals prior to their arrival here. Your love, support, and encouragement have produced the remarkable individuals seated here, and it's enabled them to make sound choices. We're grateful to these graduates for their choice to serve, and they could not have gotten to this point without the careful guidance and support of family and friends. On behalf of the Navy and the grateful nation, please accept my most sincere thank you. To the graduates here today, I'm proud of each and every one of you. You all had many other options of volunteering to serve your country, yet you chose this path. I thank you for your patriotism and your willingness to serve. I assure you that a life of service holds many rewards and will bring you great fulfillment. You've completed rigorous military, academic, and physical training. You've overcome obstacles. Nothing was handed to you except opportunity. The opportunity to make something more of yourself, to learn, to lead, and to grow. You seize that opportunity, and today you reap its rewards. I congratulate each and every one of you for this significant and memorable achievement. It is now time to embrace a new opportunity to lead what is truly the Navy's most precious resource, sailors in the fleet. In the years ahead, your knowledge and leadership skills will be tested often. You'll be standing watch and working alongside fellow officers and sailors around the world, around the clock. Know that you're doing significant and meaningful work for our country. The mission of the Navy is tr of tremendous importance to our nation and the world. We serve to defend our great nation, and when we are compelled to fight, we will win. Work hard. Learn the warfare and professional skills of your designator. Strive to be the best and give your country 100% effort. Nothing else will suffice. The nation and the Navy expect the best from you, the highest standards of personal and professional conduct, excellence in leadership, and a strict adherence to the Navy's core values, honor, courage, and commitment. I applaud your accomplishment and perseverance. You're about to embark on a great adventure, one in which I hope you find both professional success and personal fulfillment. It will be unlike any other job you've ever had, and regardless of how long you serve our nation, it will most assuredly be a time in your life upon which you will look back with much pride and satisfaction. Congratulations to each and every one of you. I wish you fair winds and following seas. It's now my privilege this morning to introduce you to our guest of honor, Rear Admiral Kenneth Epps, Commander Naval Supply Systems Command and Chief of the Supply Corps. Admiral Epps is a 1990 graduate of Vanderbilt University where he commissioned through the Reserve Officer Training Program. 
He holds a Master of Business Administration from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, where he was the recipient of the Frank Hawkins Keenan Award for Excellence. He is a distinguished graduate of the Industrial College of the Armed Forces. He's previously commanded Naval Supply Systems Command Weapon Systems Support from the Fleet Logistics Center in Pearl Harbor. Afloat, he served on the USS Kitty Hawk, USS Leyte Golf, and USS Carl Vinson. Other assignments include instructor and educational counselor at the Navy Supply Corps School, aide and flag lieutenant to commander of NASA and chief of the Supply Corps, readiness analyst and program objective memorandum development assistant to the Office of Chief of Naval Operations, action officer at the Defense Logistics Agency, director of material and budgets at the Naval Inventory Control Point, Philadelphia, assistant command commander for financial management and comptroller at NASA, Chief Strategy and Readiness Division on the Joint Staff, Assistant Commander for Supply Operations and Logistics Policy at NASA, Assistant Professor at the Eisenhower Schools for National Security and Resource Strategy, and Director of Fleet Ordnance and Supply, U.S. Fleet Forces Command. His leadership is essential to the continued success of the world's greatest Navy and to conducting and enabling the supply chain acquisition and operational logistics required to sustain Naval forces worldwide prevent and decisively win wars. We are privileged to have him here with us today to share his thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our guest of honor today, Rear Admiral Ken Epson. Thank you, Captain, for reading that uh, terribly long bio. I apologize to you all. Uh, but thank you for that introduction. Um, to our distinguished guests, faculty and staff, of Officer Candidate School, and most importantly, most importantly, to the families and members of OCS Class 4 Tech 24, good morning uh, and welcome. And what I'm gonna ask is if you all could give, I want them to, as they embark on their journey in the Navy, I want them to get used to what we do in the Navy, and that is we oftentimes will never forget that uh, the family, the folks behind you are responsible for you being here today, uh, and I wanna make sure usually wait till the end of the speech at the bank, but the spouses and partners and significant others and moms and dads, I'd like for you all to give yourself a round of applause for producing this outstanding group up here. So please, round of applause. <laughs> I'm honored to be here today. Uh, and can't thank Captain Alcorn and, and his team enough for the invitation. So I am not an OCS graduate. I am an ROTC graduate, so I cannot fathom what you all have just been through uh, over the last three plus months. I distinctly remember going to uh, my ROTC indoctrination, and it only lasted a week. And I remember being so annoyed after that week, after having the first class midshipmen, you know, yelling and screaming at us, and you know, our version of OCS, but a short version. And I remember how annoyed I was after a week of doing that. So the fact that you all went through this leadership indoctrination pipeline for three months, uh, my, my hats are off to you. Um, that, that said, I always thought OCS was the right move. It's quick, uh, it's efficient, and so my hat's off to you all, not only for your wisdom in choosing to go to OCS, but like Captain Alcorn said, you all had a choice. I had kind of a quick pro quo with my commission, so I said, hey, I'll take a ROTC scholarship and I'll be glad to sign up, but you all are different. You all have either had prior service and decided you wanted to become an officer, or you were doing something else and decided that you wanted to serve in your country. So my hat's off to you. I'm fired up for the 79 of you headed off to do uh, everything from be a pilot to a public affairs officer. To include, I'm very excited, 15 of you who will soon be joining my tribe. And we'll make sure at the end of this we get a group selfie uh, before I leave for the day. Whether you come from a military family, you're prior enlisted, uh, or this is your first exposure to the Navy, today is very special. And it's special because it's the culmination of your hard work, your dedication, your focus, and probably most importantly, your desire to be part of something bigger. When I spoke uh, with one of your cohort, your classmates, uh, prior to arriving to Newport, he asked me, 
hey, can I get some advice on how to succeed in OCS? Now, mind you, I didn't have the heart to tell him. I didn't do OCS like his dad. I went to ROTC. So what I said to him was like anybody else, hey, just go watch Officer and Gentleman, right? Uh, <laughs> like everyone else, watch Officer and Gentleman. It's dated. It's a little cheesy. It's overacted. But I said the relationship between Lou Gossett Jr. and Richard Gere, that'll give you kind of a sense of what that was going to be like, and I'll let you tell me afterwards if, if Gunny and the, and the chief who ran your, your class was uh, any, anything similar to the movie. The only thing I could have from him uh, was, hey, you know, you just, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a crucible moment you're going through, so just don't take it personally, run through it, it's what we all have to go through. I said, you're going to PT a lot, you're going to lose a lot of weight, and the only thing I didn't say, so I'm going to tell you now, Alex, I apologize for not sharing this with you, but I would not go out and buy any clothes in the next week or two, because usually we gain that weight back pretty quickly. Uh, but outside of that, you all are in a good place. But I said to Alex, I said the real focus of OCS is to serve as a gateway. Part of it's the military thing. You're getting used to, you're not prior, it's used to the lingo, the protocols, the customs. But, uh, but for me, and for the Navy, the bigger element was about learning what you signed up for. And what that is, is it's what it means to be part of a team. It means what do honor, courage, and commitment mean? And how you learn to embrace and project those values. The lessons that you learned in OCS will serve as a foundation for your success, whether you stay in. You know, I'm coming up on my 34th year now, so if you come in and you stay that long, or you just do one stint and decide, hey, you're glad you served your country, you want to do something else. The things that you learned here will serve you the rest of your life. As you prepare to take the oath of office, though, so what I'll do very briefly is I wanted to share a couple of life lessons and hopefully success tips that I would share with my son if I were in your seat. So just a couple, three here, and then we'll get you, we'll swear the oath and, and get you on your way. I know you all are very excited to, to, to graduate into master. So, point number one. You are all now defenders of the American way of life. Chaplain Chaps hinted at that in his, uh, his prayer, opened up. Um, and like I said, I talked about there's a bunch of Supply Corps people here who'd like to join my tribe. I'm very excited about that. And it's true. But what's unique about the Navy is we have a bunch of different tribes. You all came in. You're going to be doing different stuff here. They all kind of have their different customs and things they like to do. Uh, and a lot of the times, like-minded people tend to get drawn together. So you will quickly go off to your training pipelines and, and become part of this mini tribe. And so what I wanted to send you all and share with you is, regardless of what tribe you end up in, we're all here for the same purpose. And that is to defend the American way of life. And this isn't just graduation day and hyperbole I'm, I'm spewing at you. The United States is a maritime nation, the source of our prosperity, the source of the freedoms that we enjoy, the source of all the goodness that we do, is bound and transacted over the Earth's oceans. The key lifelines of communications are carried on cables that dot the floor of those oceans, and any interruption to either global trade or that communication line is going to wreak havoc not only on our day-to-day -day lives, but the rest of the planet. So you are for now, whether you're a PAO, whether you're a submariner, whether you're a cryptologist, whether you're an intel officer, it doesn't matter. You're now part of an organization whose prime charter is to ensure unfettered access to global shipping lanes while protecting the sovereign nation of the open ocean. I'll let you process that for a second. Point number two. This is a very important life lesson. Your character means everything. Once you finish your follow-on training, you're about to embark on a journey of leading men and women. There are a few things more noble in life than being a leader, but it's sometimes a tricky proposition. Here's my tip of the day. 
and this is this is counter to sometimes kind of intuition of how you think leaders are developed. One, it has nothing to do with how smart you are. It has nothing to do with where you went to school. It has no. It has nothing to do with what kind of athlete you are or were, or even who your dad is or who your dad isn't. It also has nothing to do with your upbringing. It has nothing to do with the circumstances surrounding it or what opportunities you had or didn't have in life prior to today. Because you know what? Leaders are made, they are not born. And there's really only one central ingredient you need to be a good or great leader, and that is trust. You need to instill trust in your men and women. You need to instill trust in your chief petty officer, who can be your salvation or your worst nightmare, depending on how well she or he trusts you. Most critically, your sailors need to trust you. So when you go to bat for them, how vested are you in their lives? I'm telling you, I'm telling you now, there is no better rat sniffer out there than a Navy sailor, even one fresh at a boot camp. They can smell a fake from a mile away, and the minute you lose their trust, you're done. It's over. So how do you how do you gain their trust? So this is pro tip number two. Obviously, as their leader, you need to project confidence and confidence and the fact that you all have graduated through this program and were selected to be officers in the United States Navy means that each one of you is singularly prepared and qualified to exude confidence and competence. So do not worry about that part. You need to do more, talk less, you gotta walk the walk. Say what you mean, you gotta do what you say, and you gotta follow up. But the real special sauce here, if you really want the pro tip on being a great leader is, you've got to learn to put your men and women ahead of you first. This is what separates the great ones from the run-of-the-mill officers. You have to recognize it's not about you. It's not about you getting your warfare pen. It's not about the medals you get. It's none of that. Your goal in life as an officer, it's about what you can do to help your men and women achieve their dreams. How you help them get through their personal tragedies and the thumps of life. The more you do for your men and women, the more they will do for you. It is that easy, but time and time again, time and time again, we see the opposite happen. Self-interest is a real thing. So my word, my word of warning to you, don't be that guy. It's all about them, it's never about you. My final advice to you, and we'll close out here. And of all the things that I'm gonna to say to you, this is probably the one that I hope you take to heart most, and it's probably the most insightful kernel of wisdom that if you follow through with it, I can almost guarantee the results. You ready for this? And I have to put a disclaimer in here. I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a CPA, I'm not a certified uh, registered financial advisor, so all I'm about to share with you is what I would tell my younger self knowing what I know now. But here is my, and, and in the context of that, I share this advice based on my assumption that the, really the pillars of a good life or revolve around three things. Strong relationships with human beings that you care about. So if you've got strong relationships with people you care about, key, key pillar of a good life. Your health is obvious, and then the third one is financial security. So I don't have enough time to talk about the first two. I would take an entire day to do that, but the last one I can hit, and it's an easy one for you. And so here is the nugget that you can win for. The best advice I've ever gotten about investing, and I've been reading about investing my entire life, is this. Do it early and do it often. Do it early and do it often, and that is it. Now, here's what you do with that advice. And again, I'm only recommending to you what I would recommend to my 21, 25, however old you are so. Uh, first, you have to start a savings habit. So if you are not a saver, and you haven't developed a habit of saving a piece of your income every uh, paycheck, you need to do that. If there is one thing you take away out of here, you forget everything else I said, start a savings habit. The second, if you need a primer on how to get this, uh, I've read a thousand books on personal finance. The 
book I would recommend is not written by Dave Ramsey. The book I would recommend to you is called The Millionaire Next Door. It was written in 1995. It is the OG book on personal finance. I encourage you all, you can get it on the DOD library for free, download it. I encourage you to read it. Trust me here. Finally, put that knowledge to good use. You all have a 401 TSP. I encourage you to save early, save often, and save until it hurts. Don't just max out the TSP up to the max. That's where a lot of people will stop. I would save, if I were you, I'd save as much as you can in your TSP until you max that out. And then once you max that out, I would save in a Roth IRA. And then once you max that out, I'd put money if you got kids and you want to send them to school in a 529. And then and only then after that, then and only then after you've gotten to that point, would I start maybe splurging a little bit about yourself. Now, it seems intuitive, advice to, to, to listen to. But let me give you a thing that happens to all of us. It's called lifestyle creep. The car you drive as an 01 is typically not the car you drive as an 04. And if you can learn, the best thing I ever did in my life was when I made 04, I kept my lifestyle as, a, as what the same lifestyle I had as an 01 and 02. You let that and compound interest work for you, you will be in great shape. Save until it hurts. Do it while you're young, and then when you're older, it'll be much easier. Do it for 30 years, and then if I'm still around in 30 years, I'll send you my email, and you can send me your thank you. That is my advice to you. <laughs> As I prepare to administer the oath, uh, I want each student be ensign to take a moment to reflect on what you're about to do here. You are about to take an oath to the Constitution of the United States of America. You're not taking an oath to a person, to the Navy or to a breed. You're pledging to support and defend the foundational document of our country. It is what makes us the United States of America. It is what makes us special. As you take this oath, remember, the responsibility you will shoulder is both profound and noble. Uphold those ideals of honor, courage, and commitment, and let the Constitution always guide you in the challenges you face and the decisions you're going to make. Always remember that you are not defending just a nation. You are defending the promise and the premise of America itself. Could not be more thrilled to have you join our ranks. Um, I can't tell you. How delighted I am. I was uh, an ROTC guy and I said I was going to do four years and get out. And this was in 1990 when I graduated from ROTC, so you can do the math. 1994 was supposed to be my time. I took off the uniform and never looked at it again. And here I am in 2022 speaking to you. I have lived a full, rewarding, and wonderful life, and I wish that on all of you here in this room. At the end of your life, you want to look back and you want to feel like you did something meaningful. If you take my advice today, and with a bit of good luck at your back, you'll get that, and then come on this journey we're about to begin on. So congratulations, class. Thank you for having me as your speaker today, and I look forward to seeing you in the foot. Thank you very much. will now receive the oath of office. Would all military personnel in uniform please come to a position of attention? Ah, zero four attack, zero four. Attention! Class zero four attack, two four. Raise your right hand. I state your name. I state your name. Having been appointed an ensign in the United States Navy, I have been appointed an ensign in the United States Navy. Do hereby accept such appointment. Do hereby accept such appointment. And do solemnly swear. And do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion.
service of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully, and I will well and faithfully discharge the duties, discharge the duties of the office on which, of the office on which I'm about to enter. I'm about to enter. So help me God. Congratulations, Innocence. Round of applause, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Class, do a four tag two four. Ready? Seat. The distinguished graduates assembled will now be recognized by the commanding officer and guest of honor for their achievements while undergoing training upon here at Officer Training Command Newport. The Lieutenant Thomas Eady Award is presented to the ensign who has achieved the highest overall average in academics, military training, and physical fitness. This award is being presented to Ensign Ritter. Additionally, Ensign Ritter has been awarded the Rear Admiral Stephen B. Lutz Academic Award for achieving the highest academic average in the class. Ensign Ritter has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to DDG 89 USS Mustang in San Diego, California. Ensign Ritter is a distinguished Naval graduate. Chapel Clardy United States Marine Corps Physical Fitness Award is presented to the Ensign who achieved the highest overall grade in physical fitness while attending officer candidate school. This award is presented to Ensign Bloss. Ensign Bloss has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to naval introductory flight evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Bloss is a distinguished naval graduate. The Commander Jack Lovett Leadership Award is presented to the Ensign, chosen by the class as the peer who most inspired them and personifies the highest standards of personal example, sound management practice, and moral responsibility. This award is presented to Ensign Goswick. Ensign Goswick has been designated as an intelligence officer and has been assigned to Navy Intelligence Officer Basic Course in Dan Lake, Virginia. We will now recognize the remaining graduates. Ensign Blanche has been designated Information Professional Officer and assigned to Information Professional Officer Basic Course for Jane Beach, Virginia. Ensign Schroeder J has been designated Spike Corps Officer and assigned to Spike Corps School, Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Uwe has been designated Spike Corps Officer and has been designated Spike Corps School, Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Wilson S has been designated Spike Corps Officer and assigned to Spike Corps School, Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Rivers has been designated Student Naval Aviator and assigned to Naval, Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation, Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Rivers is a distinguished Naval graduate. Ensign O'Leary, a completing designation, has been assigned to Officer Training Command Newport. Ensign Bowman has been designated Student Naval Aviator and assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation, Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Asplund has been designated Surface Warfare Officer and Nuclear and assigned to LPD-17 USS San Antonio, Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Adamson has been designated Submarine Officer and Nuclear and assigned to Nuclear Power School, Charleston, South Carolina. Ensign Aka has been designated Aviation Maintenance Duty Officer and assigned to CVN-71 versus Theodore Roosevelt, San Diego, California. Ensign Allen has been designated Student Naval Aviator and assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Lab Evaluation, Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Anderson has been designated Spike Corps Officer and has been assigned to Spike Corps School, Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Austin has been designated Intelligence Officer and has been assigned to Naval Intelligence Officer Basic Course, Dam Neck, Virginia. Ensign Banerjee has been designated Surface Warfare Officer and assigned to LSD-42 USS Germantown, San Diego, California. Ensign Bennett has been designated Intelligence Officer and assigned to Naval Intelligence Officer Basic Course, Dam Neck, Virginia. Ensign Boone has been designated Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to LCS-18 USS Charleston, San Diego, California. Ensign Boring has been designated Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to LSD-44 USS Gunson Hall, Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Butler has been designated Civil Engineer Corps Officer and assigned to Public Works Department, Washington, in Washington, D.C. 
It's in Cook, Lincoln Disney, Student Naval Aviator. It's been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation, Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. It's in Cusidor, it has been designated to Flight Corps Officer. It's been assigned to Flight Corps School, Newport, Rhode Island. It's in Ellisway, it has been designated to Flight Corps Officer. It's been assigned to Flight Corps School, Newport, Rhode Island. It's in Elder Bay, it has been designated as Student Naval Aviator. It's been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation, Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. It's in Fetter, has been designated Submarine Officer Nuclear. It's been assigned to Nuclear Power School, Charleston, South Carolina. It's in Fisher, has been designated as Flight Corps Officer. It's been assigned to Flight Corps School, Newport, Rhode Island. It's in Fogelsong, has been designated as Flight Corps Officer. It's been assigned to Flight Corps School, Newport, Rhode Island. It's in Frederick, has been designated as Aviation Maintenance Duty Officer. It's been assigned to Aviation Maintenance Duty Officer School in Milton, Florida. It's in Fredette, has been designated Student Naval Aviator. It's been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation at Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. It's in Gallagher, has been de designated as Triple Logic Warfare Officer. It's been assigned to Triple Logic Warfare Basic Course in Pensacola, Florida. It's in Hattendorf, has been designated as Student Naval Aviator. It's been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation, Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. It's in Hines Parks, has been designated as Surface Warfare Officer. It's been assigned to LCS-12, USS Omaha, San Diego, California. It's in Houston, has been designated Information Professional Officer. It's been assigned to Information Officer Basic Course, Camden, Virginia. It's in G, has been designated as Surface Warfare Officer Nuclear. It's been assigned to LSC-49, USS Harpers Ferry, in San Diego, California. It's in Jones, B, has been designated as Surface Warfare Officer. It's been assigned to LPD-17, USS San Antonio, in Norfolk, Virginia. It's in Jones, R, has been designated uh, as Flight Corps Officer. It's been assigned to Flight Corps School, Newport, Rhode Island. It's in Joseph, has been designated as Surface Warfare Officer. It's been assigned to LSD 46, USS Tortuga, Norfolk, Virginia. It's in Canaan, has been designated as Student Naval Aviator. It's been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation, Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. It's in Calendar, has been designated as Surface Warfare Officer. It's been assigned to LSD 48, USS Ashland in San Diego, California. It's in Kim, has been designated as Flight Corps Officer. It's been assigned to Flight Corps School, Newport, Rhode Island. It's in Kirk, has been designated as Intelligence Officer. It's been assigned to Naval Intelligence Officer Basic Course in Damneck, Virginia. It's in Kirk, is a distinguished Naval graduate. It's in Longview Junior, has been designated as Flight Corps Officer. It's been assigned to Flight Corps School, Newport, Rhode Island. It's in Mac, has been designated as Flight Corps Officer. It's been assigned to Flight Corps School, Newport, Rhode Island. It's in Marshawn, has been designated as Student Naval Aviator. It's been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation at Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. Mr. Marshawn is a distinguished Naval graduate. It's in Marsic, has been designated as Student Naval, Naval Aviator. It's been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation at Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. It's in Masenga, has been designated as Flight Corps Officer. It's been assigned to Flight Corps School, Newport, Rhode Island. It's in McCartney, has been designated as Student Naval Aviator. It's been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation at Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. It's in McLean, has been designated as Information Professional Officer. It's been assigned to Information Professional Officer Basic Course in Virginia Beach, Virginia. It's in Minha, has been designated Student Naval Aviator. It's been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation, Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. It's in Wynn, has been designated as Surface Warfare Officer, Nuclear. It's been assigned to DDG 87, USS Mason, in Mayport, Florida. It's in Ogden, has been designated Intelligence Officer. It's been assigned to Naval Intelligence Officer Basic Course, Damneck, Virginia. It's in Osborne, has been designated as Submarine Officer, Nuclear. It's been assigned to Nuclear Power School, Charleston, South Carolina. It's in Paul, has been designated Student Naval Flight Officer. It's been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation at Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. It's in Pesacrita, has been designated Cryptologic Warfare Officer. It's been assigned to Cryptologic Warfare Officer Basic Course, Pensacola, Florida. It's in Pettit, has been designated Surface Warfare Officer. It's been assigned to DDG 71 USS Ross. Norfolk, Virginia. It's in Rodriguez, has been designated an Information Professional Officer. It's been assigned to Information Professional Officer Basic Course, Virginia Beach, Virginia. It's in Ruger, has been designated 
Student Naval Flight Officer, been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation, Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. Ms. Sander has been designated as Supply Corps Officer, been assigned to Supply Corps School in Fort Rhode Island. Ms. Schmall has been designated Surface Patrol Corps Officer and been assigned to LCS 38 USS Kingsville in San Diego, California. Ms. Intruder, Justin, has been designated as an Information Professional Officer and assigned to Information Professional Officer Basic Course, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ms. Sembrot has been designated Student Naval Aviator and assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation, Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. Ms. Serapin has been designated Student Naval Aviator and assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation, Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. Ms. Sylvia has been designated Intelligence Officer been assigned to Intelligence Officer Basic Course, Dan Neck, Virginia. Ms. Simonson has been designated Student Navy Aviator, been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation, Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. Ms. Nuzinski has been designated as a Student Naval Aviator, been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation, Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. Ms. Nuzinski has been designated the Surface Warfare Officer has been assigned to LCS 18, USS Charleston, San Diego, California. Ms. Sousa has been designated Intelligence Officer, has been assigned to Intelligence Officer Basic Course, Dan Neck, Virginia. Ms. Tessier has been designated Intelligence Officer, has been assigned to Intelligence Officer Basic Course, Dan Neck, Virginia. Ms. Tolliver has been designated Surface Warfare Officer, has been assigned to DDG 87, USS Mason, Mayport, Florida. Ms. Tong has been designated as Supply Corps Officer, has been assigned to Supply Corps School, Newport, Rhode Island. Ms. Torres has been designated Critical Ops Warfare Officer, has been assigned to Critical Ops Warfare Officer Basic Course, in School, Florida. Ms. Torres is a distinguished Naval graduate. Ms. Watkins has been designated Student Naval Aviator, has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation, Naval Air Station, in School, Florida. Ms. Western has been designated Student Naval Flight Officer, has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation at Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. Ensign White has been designated Intelligence Officer, has been assigned to Intelligence Officer Basic Course, Dan Neck, Virginia. Ensign Wilson, C, has been designated Critical Ops Warfare Officer, has been assigned to Critical Ops Warfare Officer Basic Course, Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Wyndham has been designated Student Naval Flight Officer, has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation, Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Yang has been designated Surface Warfare Officer, Engineering Duty Officer, and has been assigned to DDG-73 Decatur in Honolulu, Hawaii. Ensign Hall has been designated Public Affairs Officer, and has been assigned to Naval Special Warfare Group 1, San Diego, California. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing the United States Navy's newest ensigns. Please rise for the playing of the surf songs and the final dismissal. Class, 04 Tag 2 Floor, attention!